You're listening to Illuminate, our Hands at Work Advent series on the Meanwhile in Africa podcast channel. Malawi, the warm heart of Africa, warm in the friendliness of the people, but terribly cold in the winter. The road to Kawaza winds through networks of maize fields and mud huts with thatch roofing. Kids in uniform walk on the shoulder of the road, too close to the passing cars. Women sitting in the heat with small piles of vegetables. Stands with goat meat laid out in the hot sun, flies swarming. A crowd of men gather around a small shed. Wandering dogs, goats, and even small children. Too small to be wandering. It's no different than it was yesterday, or a month, or even years ago. But on an unremarkable patch of land, not much to look at and easy to miss if you're not looking for it, is the Kawaza Life Center. A couple humble shelters stand in defiance of the lush, proud mountains in the distance. Smoke rolling out of one of the windows. Like a flower that has pushed through the concrete sidewalk, life abounds. The sound of children laughing. Girls sing to the rhythm of a skipping rope. Boys play with a ball made from recycled plastic bags. Beans and maize cook in a large iron pot over the fire. From the shade under a tree, comes the heartfelt singing of a group of men and women. Children who are considered the most vulnerable in their community make their way to this place every day. A place of peace, of love. They are welcomed by name and greeted by the care workers. Local Christians who have committed their lives to caring for vulnerable children and their families in Kawaza. Each week, the primary caregivers of these families meet beneath this tree with the care workers. They open up with one another about their histories and current struggles, gaining understanding and strength through God's word and by praying together. Madi is a primary caregiver the grandmother to Lucia and Victor. They have been coming to the Life Center for a few years now, but it has only been this year that Madi has been coming to the meeting under the tree. The thought of sharing her story had been too much, too painful. She was married with five children of her own, but her husband left her and married another woman. He would later return to her but then leave her again and marry another. He would start another family elsewhere, but then return to her again and again. The shame followed her like a shadow. And like a shadow, it offered no friendship. She never felt worthy of friendship. Under the shade of the tree, her shadow does not follow her. She shares with other caregivers about her daughter, Charmaine, the care workers and the hands at work team that supports the care workers all know Gokoma distress over her daughter's story. Cooper recalls an earlier time in Charmaine's life. Her daughter was happily married, but sadly became mentally ill after giving birth to her daughter. Charmaine's in-laws would not support her. They brought her and her daughter Lucia to Gokomadi to be responsible for them both. In her illness, Charmaine wonders. While she was away, she became pregnant by an unknown man. She gave birth to her second child, a son named Victor, who is also under Gokomadi's care. Even recently, Charmaine wanders off and Goko shares with the group that she is just exhausted after being up all night worrying about her daughter. She is asking for prayer for strength, as she must go work today at a local farm. 
is the only way she can care for her family. Juliana, who coordinates the work in Kawaza, shares a Bible story from Mark 5 about a woman who had been bleeding for 12 years and suffered greatly for it. An outcast that no one was willing to help, but she trusted that Jesus could heal her. Denying the power of her shame, she found him in a busy crowd where she reached out just to touch his coat. Instantly, she was healed. Juliana encouraged all those who came to the tree that day that though they have suffered a long time, Jesus has the power to heal our brokenness and make us whole again. This has impacted her life in a positive way. A safe place where she can just be part of a community of people that care for her. Her one desire is that her daughter be healed from her mental illness so that she's able to take care of herself. They prayed together for each other's worries and challenges, and specifically for healing for Charmaine. After praying, Gogomadi shared that she was so grateful that Jesus has brought healing to her. She found a home in this community of caregivers. God gave her this gift to belong and to be loved. She decided to become a care worker herself, supporting other families the way she was supported. Though her challenges remain with her daughter and family, she is strengthened every day under the tree. Thank you for listening to Maddie's story. Her name and her children's name have been changed for privacy. You've been listening to Illuminate Podcast by Hands at Work in Africa. If you haven't already subscribed to the podcast, please find us on Spotify, Apple or Google Podcasts by searching Meanwhile in Africa. Learn how you can give the gift of hope. Visit www.hands.org slash the gift of hope.